Good morning, everybody. So today I want to talk about how much water pressure is too much water pressure. For the last few days and weeks, I've been getting a lot of clients recently who have been demanding to get as high of water pressure as they can. Some even wanting as close to 80 PSI or higher inside of their house. I want to talk about why that's not always a great idea and how perspective can change what pers uh, pressure you see and feel. Let's get into it. So we're on well water, even public water, right? And we're having concerns about water pressure. Well, the first thing we need to figure out, how much water do we actually have to work with? Because if you don't have enough water, it doesn't matter how much pressure you have. If you only got two gallons a minute from uh, flow, you're only gonna be able to do so much, right? So you turn on a shower, a bathtub, and do the dishes. If you only got two gallons per minute flow, you're gonna have water pressure issues. So the first step, figure out how much water you have. Public water, not necessarily as big of an issue because it's just gonna be whatever the municipal is pushing out, right? So that's kind of gonna be one of your main lines. Yeah, just it is what it is, right? Private water, now that is where things get a little bit different. So previously in the other video, we discussed uh, what is a one hour well yield, a three hour well yield, or a six hour well yield. In this perspective, or potential, um, process, right? We're going to be trying to figure out how much water do we have, right? So we run it for a while, every 15 minutes, we fill a bucket and we can do the math and we can figure out, okay, this well is able to produce 15 gallons a minute, two gallons a minute, 32 gallons a minute. You want to do a well yield test first to figure out how much water you actually have to work with. Once you do that test, now we can start to figure out, well, how big is the house, how far away from the pressure tank and from the pump is whatever faucet or fixture we're trying to get higher pressure at and what size piping is going between the two right so let's say that right off the bat your pressure you've got good flow you've got a high yielding well you're at 10 gallons a minute looks beautiful perfectly crystal clear water no 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 debris or any kind of sedimentation or iron you're good to go so the pressure tank is what's going to supply pressure to the home there are some brands out there that call variable speed pumps, like a Grunfoss or an Arco Aquavar Solo, or even Franklin Electric Subdrive. They'll be able to give you city pressure on a well. But the standard conventional way that a well system works, you have the pump in the well, a pressure tank in the house with a pressure switch. The pressure switch generally will have a 20 point swing. It'll either go 20, 40, 30, 50, or 40, 60. You can manipulate that, that pressure by adjusting the nut on the back of the pressure switch. But you're still going to have a 20 point swing unless you mess with the differential spring, right? So what that's going to look like is going to be one of these little fellas over here, right? So we're going to have our pressure switch, which is going to look like this, right? So this is the pressure switch. The water goes through the nipple into this, and then there's a spring that's actually going to be in here that will re recognize what the pressure of the water is. From there, it'll engage these clamps or disengage these clamps depending on that flow. So this spring right here, this is your differential spring. This is what's gonna be set for the 20 point swing, right? This is gonna be your pressure, uh, pressure spring. So every full rotation, every time you spin it twice, you basically go up two points, right? So every spin is about one pressure point, but you'll still have that 20 point swing because of the differential spring. So by adjusting that, you'll get higher pressure in the home. But most of these, like I said, are factory set at 20, 40, 30, 50, or even 40, 60. So what's too much? Well, most municipal water supplies will have anywhere from 60 to 70 PSI of water, right? Most pressure uh, well systems generally will be in the same ballpark range, especially if you have one of those constant pressure systems, you'll be able to get higher pressure. Or let's just say you have a booster pump, you'll be able to get higher pressure. But that switch is gonna tell the pump, hey, pump, I'm low on water, I need more water, and then the pump will engage. It will push the water from the well from into the house, and then the pressure tank itself, top part's air, bottom part's water, there's a little bladder in between. So what'll happen is the pump will push the water into the house, it will then compress the air in the top part of that pressure tank, and then once you get to your desired pressure, so 60 PSI for this example, the pump turns off by that switch. You'll hear an audible click sound. From there, the air pressure in that tank will push the water out of the tank and into the rest of the home. But it's only pneumatic, right? So the further away you go, or the more water you start to use, 
you will inherently start to lose pressure, right? That is until the pump kicks back on, but even then, depending on the type of pump, you may not have a strong enough pump to get it back up to 60, depending on how much water you're calling for. If your pump's only discharging seven gallons per minute, you're using eight, you're at a negative one difference, right? So that means over time, you're gonna be drawing down faster and faster, and you're gonna lose more pressure, right? So, why am I bringing this up? So I keep seeing all these people who want to put uh, adjustments on the springs to get higher pressure. Well, if we know that everything's working to get the water to the house, if you've got plenty of flow, before you start adjusting those springs or trying to retrofit everything to a new variable speed pump or even booster pumps, first thing you wanna check, check your filters, right? See if you have any kind of sediment filter. See if you have any kind of water treatment. When's the last time it was serviced? When was the last time that it back flushed? If the filter is clogged up, inherently you're going to get less pressure because the more restrictive points you put in the piping, the more you're going to see a decrease in the outflow of that water. And remember, the outflow, if you have a high enough outflow, you can increase the pressure to whatever you want. So if the filter's good, what's the next step? What else do you check? Aerators, right? So if you go to the sink, you're going to see this little tiny circular piece underneath the faucet that's going to be referred to as an aerator. Sometimes they're external where you can actually physically manually unscrew it by hand. Sometimes you're going to need this little key that you stick underneath of it if it's a recessed one and you just twist it and it pops right out. Those little tiny screens, right? They're only about the size of a nickel. So if you have a real fine particles going through the water, it can potentially plug that up. When it's plugged up, guess what? Now you get lower flow. Generally where most people complain about their low pressure is going to be the shower head. Sometimes it might just be the actual shower head that you picked, right? If you get one of those giant square, like 64 uh, hole shower heads, like the rainwater fall shower heads, it may just be that it's too big for the amount of water that's coming through, right? So if you've got a half inch pipe coming in, let's just say that that half inch pipe's able to produce two gallons a minute, right? Well, if each one of those holes uses a 10th of a gallon, once you get over 20 holes, now you're at a deficit and so then you're going to get a lower pressure right so you got to kind of think about how much supply do i have how far away am i and what type of unit am i using on my shower head so if you don't do the math or think about it even though it looks pretty if you put a nice brand new pretty shower head in there you may not have the pressure that you want or you might think that you have a bad well pump bad, bad pressure switch bad pressure tank when in reality, it's just a plugged up shower head that hasn't been changed in 20 years and there's calcium deposits inside of there that are just restricting the flow. If you're concerned about water pressure, what I usually recommend is go to like an exterior faucet, right? So your hose bibs, a lot of a lot of houses in our area, they don't put the treatment onto the exterior hose bibs. So it'll usually be raw water, just like if you were to hook up the pressure tank. So if the master bath has low water pressure in the shower, Go to the exterior faucet, turn that on. See what, what does it look like? Does it seem like it's coming out nice and fast? Is it flowing good? If the shower head doesn't flow well, but the exterior faucet uh, is flying like crazy, that could mean that the shower head is itself not going well. It also could mean that the vertical lift is too high, right? Let's just say that you have a four story house. Not very many people have that, but I've been to houses that are 13,000 square foot. Yeah, if you're going 150 foot the other direction on the other side of the house and you're going up you're just using pneumatic force you may not have enough oomph to actually get the water over that's okay that's where you can get these little tiny booster pumps that you put right after the pressure tank and what it'll do is it'll reprime that water and it'll mechanically push the water throughout the house and then that will boost up your pressure why don't you want to start going above 70 psi well first and foremost all pressure switches and pressure tank t's are gonna have a little pressure relief valve right next to them, right? So it's just this little tiny little device. Generally, it'll go off at 75 PSI. There's a little spring with a little gasket that's pushed in place. Well, when the pressure starts getting above 75, it'll push that spring back, the gasket will let the water flow, and then the water flow will actually drop the pressure in the tank. The reason that exists is so that we don't have any kind of explosion or a pipe burst, right? We don't want that to happen, but there are some out there that are a little bit higher set than 75 PSI. So why you don't wanna have your pressure so high, one, that thing's gonna go off. Let's just say you have carpet. Let's just say you have pictures, furniture, or you have something nice next to the pressure tank. Well, when that thing goes, it's gonna be putting water onto the floor, which could potentially damage those items, and you don't want that. The next thing to consider is your joints, right? Your pipes, 
let's just say somebody used CPVC. Maybe they didn't bond it well. Maybe they didn't use enough glue. Yeah, at 60 PSI held on just fine. 80 PSI, maybe that's enough to push that fitting right off and now you got a burst pipe, right? Usually it's gonna be the fittings or any of the angles uh, that burst, not necessarily the pipe itself. Most of it's like CPVC, copper, PEX. Those things are good for internal uh, issues, but as far as like the joint, that's usually where you're gonna start to see a uh, high pressure pop off, right? The next thing you wanna be concerned about is going to be uh, the fittings themselves, right? So if you have too much pressure, you could inadvertently ruin them. Uh, you could also ruin uh, any of your fancy high efficiency uh, appliances. When you're thinking of high efficiency, you also have to think, so people also do toilets, right? They also do faucets. Well, if you have a lower flow or higher efficiency faucet, you may not be getting as much pressure as you want, and that might be because it's trying to conserve all the water, right? Same thing goes with the toilets. I get complaints every now and again where people will be like, hey, I just bought this house. I don't know what's going on. The toilet just doesn't seem to flush very well. And it takes, like, you know, you got to do multiple flushes while you're using it. before, Otherwise, it'll clog up. Well, it's a low flow toilet, right? It doesn't have enough oomph to actually push whatever's in there. So if you're putting a lot of paper, it's not going to be like a commercial McDonald's toilet where it just blasts it with a jet of water. So you have to be more conscious of that. When you're on a well, it's super important to pay attention to what steps does the water take, right? You got your water supply, which is gonna be the well, tank, filters, air, uh, pipes, aerators. So usually it's the path of least resistance and the easiest to figure out. It's almost always the faucet head or the aerator, right? Well, if that looks fine, if that's all good, fresh, clean, good to go, well, what's the next easiest stop? The next easiest part is the filter, right? If the filter's plugged, again, super easy. Filters are five, six bucks. They're not that hard. It takes you maybe 15 minutes to change at most, right? From there, that's when it gets a little bit more complicated and you can start trying to get into more of the diagnostics of what's going on. If you're super concerned about pressure, consider going away from the traditional uh, pressure switch model and go to something where the pump is what supplies pressure to the home, not the pressure tank. Those are variable speed pumps. Those are gonna be great. They give you what's called constant pressure and it makes everybody happy. Those pumps are also designed to do that, whereas a, a conventional system may not be able to handle that kind of excessive on-off, on-off, on-off. Because uh, how those constant pressure systems work is it's gonna have a computer that reads the pressure that'll increase the output of the pump or decrease the output of the pump depending on the demand that the house has. Whereas with a conventional system, it's full blast all the way until it gets to 60 PSI and then it's off. Full blast all the way through and then it's off. Right, so it's gonna constantly do this, but there's no gradual incline or decline, whereas a constant pressure system, that's how it works. The computer tells the pump to speed up or slow down. I hope that this helps uh, bring a little bit more clarity to you guys. I, I don't think that it's a bad idea to want more pressure, but you have to be mindful of what you're doing, right? Even on city water, like they put these pressure reducing valves to get it to a more manageable state. Even on city water, you're gonna see 70 PSI or less in the pipes. Every now and again, you'll come out across somebody who's at 80, 90 PSI, but they're playing a risky game, right? If that pressure reducing valve's not working, you're running the risk of that pipe bursting or having something go terribly wrong where now you come home and you got water all throughout your basement. If you enjoy content like this, please go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe. I have more information on the world of well and septic posted daily. I hope that this helps. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below. I try to get back to everybody as fast as I can. Until next time, guys.